the issue of policy uncertainty has loomed very large in our economic debate. So we came against this background and accepting what the needs uh, of the South African economy are at the moment around the questions of policy uncertainty for some years. It was based on, it's been based on, on three elements. The first is a news-based index using the frequency of references to policy-related uncertainty in leading South African publications. So you all have a very important role to play in future to help, to help give us input. Secondly, uh, we have a, a group of expert economists, uh, about 25 of them, who have agreed to give us their input every three months based on a standard questionnaire. And then in consultation with the University of Stellenbosch, where as you know they produce a quarterly survey of manufacturers' confidence, where they ask a specific question of which they've not made much so far because there's a long list of questions which add up to that confidence. To what extent does the policy and political climate inhibit your activities? And that is our third input. So those are the three inputs we use, uh, which we then ran in the third quarter of last year to see what the outcome would be, how stable uh, and rigorous uh, would the index be. And we decided to use a base of 50. You will know that some other indices, such as the PM and ISO, work on 50. We thought 50 was probably best. So that's the base we started off from. So if it's above 50, then uncertainty has risen. And if it falls, uh, if it declines, then it means uncertainty has declined. Those are the three inputs we use, uh, which we then ran in the third quarter of last year to see what the outcome would be, how stable uh, and rigorous uh, would the index be. And we decided to use a base of 50. You will know that some other indices, such as the PM and ISO, work on 50. We thought 50 was probably best. So that's the base we started off from. So if it's above 50, uh, then uncertainty has risen. And if it falls, uh, if it declines, then it means uncertainty has declined. Now. Just to repeat, those are the three elements then. The news-based uncertainty, the economists' views on uncertainty, manufacturers' views on policy constraints. This has given us an average PUI of 55.4, that's, in other words, it's risen by 5.4 points for the fourth quarter, which does reflect a spike in the policy uncertainty over the previous base quarter. In the fourth quarter, you had two important events which affect economic perceptions. The one is the so-called mini-budget. There, I think, the view is there is predictability, or there was predictability, in the mini-budget of the 21st of October of last year by the previous Minister of Finance as to what our budget might look like in March, uh, in February, later this month. But, of course, with the events in, in December, this situation obviously turned around and explains why there was more uncertainty uh, surrounding uh, the, the replacement uh, of, uh, of Minister Neni uh, and the uncertainties generated by the saga around that appointment. The second important event was the, the two monthly meeting of the monetary policy we have a predictable monetary policy. Let me say you like it. That's another issue. That's not part of the index. But the one area that I think you can predict fairly safely have been had a, a monetary path that has been outlined has been on decisions about interest rates. It was expected to go up in the for, in, in the fourth quarter and expected to go up in the f, in, in the first quarter. And we'll see what impact it has when we release the the index for the first quarter of 2016, early or sometime in the month of, of April. Then another factor that obviously, in trying to interpret the fourth quarter of 2015, were the findings and assessments of the credit rating agencies. And the big issue here, even if you disentangle some of the nuances, they're not all exactly on the same page. Uh, but they're all pointing in the same direction. And the important point here is that South Africa needs to avoid 
junk status. That's the message that came out then and obviously creates an element of uncertainty then, we're talking about the fourth quarter, that whether we would or would not avoid it, and we still don't know whether we will or we won't, but we know actions are being taken. The Minister of Finance has made it categorically clear from the time he gave his media conference after his reappointment that the avoidance of, of junk status was at the top of his list for South Africa as a priority. He had a meeting on Friday with uh, a large group of CEOs in order to mobilize uh, the private sector uh, to throw their weight around every effort to um, avoid South Africa being downgraded um, to junk status during the course of the year. So, of course, remember we're talking about the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter, there was much more uncertainty as to where, how the government would react to this threat. So the important point is that this will be something we'll capture again through our three components when we uh, give you the index for the first quarter of, of 2016. Then there was, of course, the saga, I'm not going to go into it again, of the removal of, of the Minister of Finance at the time, the circumstances around that. And we think that was probably the largest explanation for why there's been a spike um, in, in the index uh, from, the, from the base quarter to the, uh, to the fourth quarter. And then there were other niggling things that cropped up during the course of that period, the issue around certain, uh, certain <coughs> regulations and certain legislation to which there was a negative reaction or there was uncertainty as to where the chips would fall. Would the government do something? Would they not? Would they ameliorate a certain situation? So those Fed, we now interpreting what we think, came out of some of, uh, especially the media reporting and the key words the key words that, that, that led to uh, uh, the identification of policy uncertainty uh, in South Africa.